I'm Danny Sesno too, and welcome to Las Vegas. Today we will be exploring one of the most iconic resorts on the Las Vegas Strip, the legendary Sahara Resort. From its fascinating history to its modern day luxury, I'm going to show you as much as I can with this resort. I love this one because it's a classic. So without further ado, let's dive right in. The resort originally opened in 1952. Sahara played a significant role in shaping the Las Vegas entertainment scene. It hosted countless Hollywood stars and legendary performers and even served as a backdrop for classic films. It used to have a Saharan desert, Moroccan inspired theme with life-size camel sculptures as you're walking up to the front doors. The hotel was dazzled with neon lights back then and it had a charm of that bygone era. It was known as the Jewel of the Desert at opening and it opened with 240 rooms and was either the 6th or the 7th resort on the Las Vegas Strip. It's pretty crazy to think about what the Strip looked like 70 years ago. The Sahara sits on the north end of the Las Vegas Strip. There's actually a sign on the marquee that says the Strip starts here. But I think the strip starts technically a little further down. You can see there's the stratosphere straight ahead. And then if we turn over this way, there is the Fontaine Blue, the long awaited, highly anticipated Fontaine Blue. A little bit of an eyesore right now, but it's starting to shape up. I believe that's supposed to open around November, somewhere at the end of the year. But as of right now, there's not too much going on on the north end. So let's head inside. It's actually been a while since I have been inside of the Sahara. And you guys know I love my nostalgia resort. This is a really great resort to stay at though if you are going to the Las Vegas Festival Fairgrounds, which is right across the street here. During the 1950s and 60s, the Sahara gained a reputation for hosting top tier entertainers like Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr. It was definitely a hub for the Rat Pack and it played a critical role in establishing Las Vegas and it did end up being a top spot for celebrities to hang out. You might see Elvis or even the Beatles at the resort back in the heydays. The lounge that was on property was the place to be. They even had a Don the Beachcomber here. I'm wondering if this is the same camel that they used to have in the entrance back in the day, but this is really cool. He's got a little Sahara t-shirt on and a little Sahara hat. <laughs> That's so funny. I love that they have this. This is the view when you're walking in. He's sort of just like peeking over at you as you're starting to walk into the casino. And if you want to see some of the classic Sahara, they did film a lot of the original Ocean's Eleven movie here, and they did a scene for Viva Las Vegas. Here's the Caspar Lounge. It looks like they have a happy hour from three to five and eight to nine. Over the years, Sahara underwent various transformations, expanding and slowly changing its theme. It looks very different now, but still has some of the original buildings and exterior shell. The resort changed hands multiple times over the decades, undergoing renovations and updates along the way, but Las Vegas was definitely evolving, and the Sahara faced increased competition from newer and larger resorts. Over here in the infinity room, I believe this is the VIP, the high rollers, but I just wanted to come take a look at these photos. Iconic. Got good old blue eyes here. And then check this one out. Sammy, Dean, and Sinatra. Then jumping ahead to the 2000s, which is how I remember the Sahara, it had multiple towers then, a convention center, and even a NASCAR themed area. Oh yeah, and a roller coaster. So the roller coaster would take you from the cafe, launch you outside of the resort, you'd go under a tunnel, there was a loop, and then it'd take you back to the launch area, but only in reverse. Kind of like the New York, New York roller coaster, only not as big, but still just as it's fun. I came out to that spot quite a few times. It definitely looks a lot different than the last time I walked to the through here when it was the SLS. There was a lobby bar. Now I think that might be where a lot of the table games are straight ahead. And then the overhead used to be open. It was kind of like more of a warehouse feel in a way, just very open ceilings. And now they've got it lowered and a lot more chandeliers and lighting around. The Sahara closed its doors in 2011 due to economic challenges, but in 2014, it was purchased by the SLS Hotel and Casino with massive renovation plans and transformed the property into a more modern upscale resort. The SLS really didn't last very long. In 2019, the branding was replaced 
replaced with the original name, the Sahara, making a return to the resort's iconic roots, and the rebranding aimed to capture the nostalgia of the classic Vegas era while offering contemporary amenities. I do think that the casino space isn't as big as maybe some of the other resorts, but it just looks really good. The aesthetic's really nice, it looks clean, it looks luxury, and there's definitely plenty of slots and plenty of table games. The casino floor is about 6,000 square feet. There's also a poker room and a sports book. I did notice that they have a few different restaurants on property. We've got Chickies and Pete's Crab House and Sports Bar. So there is a definite sports bar feel in here. The Noodle Den it says they offer for innovative twists on classic Chinese dishes. Currently, they are only open for dinner hour starting at 5 p.m. Right next to the Noodle Den is Bala, Italian Soul is what it says. They also have a happy hour from 5 to 6 and then 9 to 10. That's kind of cool. I haven't seen it as much around Las Vegas for those later hours, like 9 to 10. Those are somewhat prime hours to be out and about. Oh, look how pretty it is in here. Very picturesque. And if you keep walking from Bala Italian, we're gonna hit Bizarre Meats by Jose Andres. This is interesting. I think this screen used to be over the center bar, which is now pulled out. But I feel like I just remember this screen. But back here, so this is their luxury, their fancy steakhouse, Bizarre Meat. And from the photos online, not only does it look pretty pricey this is going to be a, a nice spot you're going to want to dress up for this but the plates look very artistic and you can see they have offerings like the ultimate tasting where it's 290 dollars a person but you basically go on a culinary journey and they've got zephyr's cafe which is closed currently they're open for breakfast and for lunch only which i kind of noticed not too many spots are open like that a lot of the spots here seem to be open for dinner only right next to that is Uno Mas, street tacos and spirits. I am so down. Okay, check this out. On the beverage menu at the very top. Dole with cocktails. There were different kinds too. That looks so good. I wonder if they have a happy hour where that is included. Across the way is the box office and then you'll also find the entrance to the pool the Ultra Pool, along with the food offerings, there is a Starbucks on site. I believe this is one of their grab and goes, but it does look like it's closed. Okay, it's open from six to 10 and then from four to four. Now heading to the back of the resort and there's plenty of really cool photos. To Elvis here at the Hotel Sahara, 1962. Sugar Ray, 1953. Oh, Liza Minnelli up there. Happy birthday to Liberace. Look at that photo. <laughs> so fun fact, I think the only time, someone will definitely correct me if I'm wrong there, but when the Beatles came, possibly their only time to Las Vegas, they were supposed to play at the Sahara and stay here at the Sahara, though they ended up playing at the convention center just because they needed more space. It was just in such high demand for the ticket to see them perform here in Vegas. So they ended up moving the performance hall, but the convention center is very close by. But I do believe that they stayed here at the Sahara. They do have a few photos of them, as you can see. This says 1964. Now let's explore some of the accommodations that the Sahara has to offer. It still has a little bit of that Moroccan, the deep colors, the browns, the reds, the warm colors. It has a little bit of that theme still, but you can definitely see that a modern, a more a luxury theme has taken over. It has a distinctive entrance and updated exterior that combines the classic charm with contemporary flair. I've never stayed here, but the photos of the rooms look really great. Each tower has a different theme, but the Alexandria Tower looks very, very unique. That tower even had its own rooftop pool, which I am trying to get to now. We're not able to check out the pool that has the day club, but I was able to get access to the fourth floor pool over at the Alexandria Tower. There are three pools in total. The gentleman downstairs had told me. This is definitely more quiet, but they do have a bar. Now, the bartender just told me that this pool is gonna be more of the family style pool. And then they do have the 21 and over pool, but it's kind of cool. They still have really neat cabanas, lots of shade. You get your own little TV. Looks like your own refrigerator in there. Nice quiet little pool over here, more family style. 
Now over at the Alexandria Tower, they have a gym and a spa on the second level. So the spa, they do treatments like facials and massages and pedicures. There's also a gym over here. It was a really nice, spacious gym. I was able to take a really quick look, but they offer a second gym in one of the other towers that's gonna be 24 seven. This one here was only open like nine to six. Also connected to the Sahara is a monorail stop. It's always super handy to have the monorail stop at the resort that you're staying at. Another super bonus though of this resort is that they do not charge for parking. We made it all the way to the very back of the resort and this is where your registration will be. So the front desk of your hotel lobby where you're going to check in. They do have a mobile check-in I see right in front of me. The line is not long, especially for being a Friday. It is being a, it is a little quiet in here. So for nightlife and entertainment, there are three lounges on site. I believe they do turn the pool area into a club environment on some nights with a DJ. Uh, I do know that they have a Latin night out there. Frankie Marino has a residency at the theater and this is now the home for Magic Mike, which moved over from the Hard Rock. And when you're up for some relaxation, the Sahara has a pretty cool pool area. The pool has a Moroccan decor and a huge TV screen that will show multiple videos all at once. If you're coming to Vegas and you're looking for a little touch of nostalgia, the Sahara might be a good option for you. It is a smaller resort, but there definitely are plenty of options inside to fill up your weekend. They are constantly offering different types of promotions at this resort. For instance, right now they're doing half off of the hotel fee. And don't forget to like this video and please subscribe for more adventures in Las Vegas and the surrounding areas and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.